inline assignment grading. What the heck does that mean when it's sitting at home with its feet up? Well, let me show you. First of all, if you add an assignment, of course, this is a, a tool that we've used for quite a while. Um, for letting students submit files to us. Uh, so it's a, probably a fairly familiar looking interface if you've used assignments before. For this demo, I'm going to use unlimited attempts just to make some things easier to display in a moment. Um, but the controls for adding an assignment haven't changed at all. It still gives you the same little intro, uh, little icon and, and entry here that students will use to submit files. And now I'm in as a student and hopping into the course here. And I'm going to go ahead and submit some files to this uh, inline assignment grading demo here that we're doing. Um, let's see, I've got some files set aside here. So let's say I'm going to submit a PowerPoint. Okay, that's something students might do with some frequency. So I'll just go ahead and submit that. Naturally, it has to upload the file, and I mean, this is what students go through uh, even before to submit files. Now, let's not even bother waiting for this. Let's do another submission, okay, because I want to submit several different attempts on here. Um, in this case, oh, why don't I go ahead and submit, oh, this Word document, and since you can do more than one file, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick this PDF as well. So we've got a couple of different file types here. All right, and I'll submit that. And again, I'm not even going to bother waiting around. Okay, so that's what I've done as a student, and I can always come back in here and see the different things that I've submitted to the assignment. And you notice I can take a look at the, um, I'll hop over to this one where it's the uh, PPTX file. See, so it's showing all of what I submitted as a student already, and I can hop over between the attempts. So this is all, again, from the student point of view. Here's the Word doc that I submitted, although its file name is so long it goes off the edge of the screen. Here's the PDF, uh, which is a couple pages long as opposed to that one page Word doc. Okay, So it can be viewed right on the screen without having to save a copy of the file onto the computer. Again, this is what a student can see. Naturally, an instructor, as I'm in again with that control, can see more. For example, going to the Needs Grading tool, I'll see the two attempts submitted by my student account here. And uh, if I want to grade one of them, I just click on that entry. And it will let me see what has been submitted. So I could review the file right here without having to, to muck about with it. And now, just for the sake of argument, uh, perhaps I have something that I want to communicate to the student about this particular slide. Well, I could come over here into the feedback window and start off by typing something like, oh, in slide 17, I really didn't like the fourth bubble that said course enrollment. The color seemed wrong to me. Um, or, <laughs> rather than be so kind of crazy like that, I could go ahead and use some of the comment tools built in and say, okay, I'm going to make an area comment and I'm going to make the area right here. And then what I want to say is and there's my comment. Okay. Now, that was pretty darn easy. Far easier than defining a bunch of things over here in the feedback window. And of course, I have other controls as well. I could uh, freeform draw on any of these slides with, well, I probably shouldn't use black because it's a dark background here. Um, naturally, drawing with your mouse is not the easiest thing in the world, um, but if you had a touch-sensitive screen or uh, you know, Wacom tablet or something, that would become quite simple. Um, yeah, okay, I'm done with that one, great. I could also go in and do some text selection here, or freeform type things. Again, the color that it goes in as probably is going to be you know, a potential problem there, um, and font size as well. So perhaps tiny isn't the best size to be appending things with. Um, 
or if I wanted to actually like strike through some of the text on the slide, there's a tool for that. Okay, so pretty good markup tools right here, yeah? And this is all available on a PPTX file, but if you remember, I put more than one thing on that second attempt, so let's take a look at what a Word document will let us do in the way of markup. Um, honestly, pretty much the exact same things. So I still have the ability to do uh, like a text comment right here, select some of this, and put in my insightful comment. And you notice that's working uh, pretty much like the Word uh, annotation tool, huh? Um, where it's giving the highlighted selection with an associated comment box off on the margin. Um, highlighting, of course, we get, you can draw attention to text that way uh, pretty easily. Um, and then you can even edit these things after the fact. If you didn't like the color, you can change it to something else. Okay, um, And then also with a PDF, uh, which of course may take a little bit longer to render. They all, every file of course really does end up being downloaded by the system and it gives you some controls of uh, what to do with it. But you'll notice this PDF actually has images as well as text in it and we still have all of these same controls for how we want to mark things up. So you can use this to uh, well, do all sorts of submissions here. And then naturally, you have the ability to punch in grades as well. So I'm going to say that they did a pretty good job out of 15 points. I'll give them 14 here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and submit that. Now that was for that attempt. I still actually didn't um, do a, uh, a grade specifically for this attempt, so you can have uh, grades separate for each attempt. Now remember how I put that box on there with the comment? That's still on there. It, it keeps all of the little markups that you do, um, even when you're jumping between attempts. So I'm going to give that one an O, some other score perhaps, and I'll submit that as well. So now I've graded these student entries. And in as a student again, I can always go right back to the assignment and take a look at what has been uh, the grades given for the entry for the two different assignments. I can try to figure out why for my first attempt I would have only earned 10 points. Naturally, if I'd been seriously grading it, I would have put in text feedback as well. But I can just scroll through here. I can say, oh, there's some sort of comments are over here. Let's take a look at that. Ah, uh, didn't like the color. Ah, oh, they're so picky. Um, or I can hop over to the second attempt where I got more points on, and I can see uh, the markup that was done on the Word document or the PDF. And it's all pretty much the, the same controls as how they got marked up. But as a student, I don't really have any choices for doing markup. That's an instructor-only control. But I still can download the newly marked up file and it includes the annotations that the instructor made, and it will allow a student to save it as a PDF on their computer. Okay, that's pretty good.